learned that there was a hiker trapped under a large boulder. Uh, I was given to understand he'd been there for two days. Um, I thought we almost lost him. If you can change the way that you see the world, you can literally change the world. But to me, it's not really about climbing mountains. It's basically, it's about reaching your full potential. If we take responsibility for creating our own reality, it's pretty amazing what we can create. It's all well and good to recognise your weaknesses, but it's also nice to recognise that you might have some strengths. Every time someone hands us a choice, and it probably happens a couple of hundred, couple of thousand times a day when you stop and think about it, but every choice, every decision we make decides where we're going to go. Recognising a situation for what it is, and whether it contains an obstacle or an opportunity. It's not what you see, it's how you see. How you see is what you get. How you see is what determines your results. Because how you see determines your reality. He tells me of his plan to climb to the island's tallest peak. How long do you reckon it would take to climb? I think a day, a day and a half. And we haven't, we haven't found that clearing. It's at this point, I, I hesitate to say that I thought we were lost. I think that's too strong a word. I like to say that we were geographically embarrassed. <laughs> Let's put it that way. We both spend a lot of time outside. We'll just, uh, we'll stick up a rain fly here and we'll spend the night here and we'll keep going the next morning. He had hops into his sleeping bag. I'm just about to hop into mine. And I think, hang on a minute, before I do this, I need to, well, you can't say use the washroom because we're outside. I need to take a leak. I've got two options. I can bash my way through the bush or I can climb up a rock face, it's about 12 foot high, and get away from the creek that way. Courage comes in all shapes and sizes. Warren, who was trapped under a 2,000 pound boulder and lost both of his legs and went on to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. If I had the chance to go back, and relive that, that moment and not have that boulder fall into my lap, I wouldn't change it. We as human beings, we've got this incredible capacity to want to survive. Let me tell you, we want to stick around. See you soon. I'd only met this guy the day before, but I don't think I've ever, ever felt so lonely as I watched him walk away. How long were you alone? In total, 45 hours. People often would say to me, after the accident, wow, I don't know how the hell you survived two days under that rock. And then they follow that up with, I couldn't have done it. And my standard response has always been, well, that's interesting, what do you reckon you might have done? <laughs> but I knew that as long as I focused on where I wanted to go, rather than each and every little obstacle that popped up, I knew I had to deal with them, but my focus was, was on absolutely where I wanted to go. It's our individual realities that create the realities that we see. So the next question I asked was, how high? He says, pretty high, up above your knees. And at that point, I basically cried myself to sleep and it's just it, whatever, whatever. And the next afternoon, woke up to a pretty much a whole new reality. I guess you don't go hiking anymore. No, that's not entirely true. Yeah. I look back now and I realise that every single day, all of us make hundreds, or dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of individual little decisions and I'll tell you, make no mistake, every one of those heads you down a different path. Now, have I mentioned yet that I'm a restless kind of a guy? <laughs> but he said, seriously, how can we call ourselves disabled when we can do everything that we want to do? Jeez, that is, pre that is astounding. Relax a bit. I'm not that good at uh, sitting you're not, back you're not... at relaxing. You know, I, I, yeah, I've always been fairly... Say, I, I was saying to, to Warren during the commercial part you know, how astounding this is that you were saying that you believe people have a power beyond yeah. what they know. Well, that's really what I've learned is just that how infinitely more powerful each of us, how, how powerful we are, you know, and, mm -hmm. and how responsible we are for creating our reality has been one of the big lessons for me. You know, it, it wasn't in my reality the same as it's not in most people's for a guy with no legs to climb to the top of Kilimanjaro. So, 
I set out to, to create that to reality. To change that, to, to create your reality. And do you feel the same way? Yeah. yeah really? Yeah. Well, this is inspirational to anybody who hears your story. So thank you. Thank um, you. Thanks for being thanks a for having me. Thank you. To learn that lesson, like how important it is, is every choice that we make, how important it is. You don't have to spend a couple of days under a rock like I did. That's the good news. Right, I think the first part is just recognising it. Recognise how important it is to take control of our own reality. <laughs> Astro, you're on a little resort town. A 1.2 kilometre race across a section of open ocean where you start at the pier, you swim across this bay to the pub on the other side. We're Australians. It's the pier to pub. Do you think it was going to work the other way around? Think you'd ever get anybody to swim from the pub to the pier? Doesn't happen that way. This race is huge. Every man and his dog who thinks he's a swimmer goes down to lawn that weekend to swim in the pier to pub. We're all getting the water. I've just got my goggles on. I'm pulling on that stupid swimming cap, which you know, I, I so obviously need it. And bang, the gun goes off. 732 guys are trying to swim over the top of each other all trying to get to the front. I'll tell you what it was like. It was like being in a washing machine. It was like being in a washing machine with 732 thrashing maniacs. I'm getting my goggles clawed off. I'm getting kicked in the face, which I'm really, really unhappy about because I can't kick anybody back. <laughs> obviously, I've obviously still got a bit of an issue about that. There are thousands, probably tens of thousands of people lined up on the beach to see the finish of this race. I get to the water's edge. I literally crawl out, claw my way along the sand out of the shallow water until I can sit up on the sand and once I've got there I start shuffling on my backside up the beach. I can tell you now, there were probably out of that crowd there there were probably a couple of thousand school kids there that day. And I guarantee you now that there would be kids that were in the crowd on the beach that day that saw me shuffling on my backside up between those flags that have never been in the water since. <laughs> and I'm telling you, I took it pretty easy on them. It crossed my mind. I know... I. I consider myself a nice guy, but I thought about it. I thought about hanging onto my legs and rolling around in the sand screaming, Shark! <laughs> but I cut them some slack. But I tell you, I'm, I'm sure there's some of them that have never been in the water since, I guarantee it. I gave some people on the beach that day something to, something to think about. I think I changed their reality a little. Because out of those 732 people... I came at number 473. So I left 259 other swimmers behind me to have a bit of a think about it, that they'd just been beaten by this guy with no legs. Gave them something to think about. Tell you what, it gave me something to think about when I had a look at my time afterwards. I'd swum that race 10 years before, and I actually swam faster that year than I had 10 years before, which sort of tells you that my kick wasn't that great. <laughs> you know how a lot of people talk about what you see is what you get? Right? That, to me, that doesn't go far enough, because I tell you what, when people saw me turn up at the beach that day, they just saw a guy with no legs. When they saw me turn up in the swimming pool to actually start swimming, they just saw a guy with no legs. It's not what you see... It's how you see. How you see is what you get. How you see is what determines your results. Because how you see determines your reality. All right, I said it once, I'll say it again. If you can change the way that you see the world, you literally change the world.